All right, in this video, I'm going to show you how to solve inequalities. So let's get started. Um, it says we solve inequalities just as we do equations with the following exceptions. So when you look at these problems, think about in, if instead, like on number one, instead of having greater than, it was an equal sign. So basically what I'm saying is we're going to solve it the same way, but we've got two things that are different. We don't need that three there. Number one, when multiplying or dividing on each side by a negative number, so this is really important. It's when you multiply or divide by a negative. When that's the case, we've got to reverse the direction of the inequality symbol. So that's really super important. Reverse the directions of the inequality anytime we multiply or divide each side by a negative number. So as we're doing something to both sides, trying to get x by itself, Anytime we multiply or divide by a negative, the symbol has to be reversed. Now, some of you might be thinking, why? Well, let's look at this. What if you have 2 is less than 3? Okay, so we're going to multiply both sides by negative, two, or negative 1, and we're going to get negative 2 is less than negative 3. Well, the problem with that is that's no longer true, because if you look at a number line, the negative 3 is on the left. So negative 3 is the smaller number. So negative 2 is not less than negative 3. So it just turns out that when you divide by a negative, just the nature of inequalities, it's no longer going to be true unless you flip the symbol. So let's look at the examples that I put here for you. So notice on number 1, I'm trying to get x by itself, so I divided both sides by negative 2 here. And notice I switched the symbol. And the reason why is because I divided both sides by a negative. We get x is less than negative 5 over 2. Look at number 2. I never reversed the symbol. The reason why is I subtracted 4 on both sides to get the 3x is greater than 6. But subtracting 4 has nothing to do with multiplying or dividing, so I don't switch the sign. And then I divided by 3, which is a positive number. And so I never did anything, I never divided by a negative or multiplied by a negative, so I don't reverse the symbol. Answer is x is greater than 2. By the way, the other thing that I forgot to mention on number 2, our solutions will be infinite sets of numbers, which we can describe using interval notation or by graphing them on the number line. So in the past, we've solved equations like 2x equals 5. I would divide both sides by 2 and I get x equals 5 halves, and I have one answer. The solution to this equation is the single value 5 halves. Now with these problems, we're going to have infinitely many solutions, and that's why we're going to be writing our answers using interval notation, which you'll see very shortly. All right, let's look at number 3. So you could actually do number 3 one of two ways here. Now what I find for most students, it's better to just keep x on the left. If you look at this first step here, we need to isolate x on one side only. So I can subtract 5x from both sides, which is what I uh, did here. Or I could subtract 2x from both sides and get rid of the x on the left. Like I said, I prefer to, to do this especially with newer students or, or students that are learning this. And uh, notice I'm keeping the, le the uh, variable on the left here. So I've got a 2x and a minus 5x. That's the minus 3x here. And so I get negative 3x minus 1 is greater than 8, because these guys cancel out. <coughs> and then I'll, I added 1 to both sides. Notice I haven't done anything with division by a negative or multiplication by a negative, so that symbol hasn't changed. But finally, I get to this step here, and I'm going to have to divide both sides by negative 3. And so when I do that, I do have to reverse the symbol. Now, what if you did it the other way, and you got rid of the x on the left? So you can see here I subtracted 2x on both sides, and I end up with this equation here. And if you get x by itself, I subtracted 8 on both sides, and then divided by 3, and you get this expression here. 
Now, when you read an inequality like this, if you read it from left to right like we normally do, we read negative 3 is greater than x. But if we read it backwards, this reads x is less than negative 3. And so I want to write this with x on the left as x is less than negative 3. And in fact, that's what I have here. All right. So if you don't want to have to switch, now let me just say this. When I'm solving equations, I really don't care what side x is on when I get to the end. But with inequalities, I want you to, to write your answer with x on the left. And I'm, the main reason is I want to make sure that you can handle a situation like this and know what your answer is. You wouldn't want to leave it like this. I need to see x on the left, and that helps me to see that you understand what that answer means. All right, let's go to number four. Now, look at number four. This is not going to be like the equations we've solved in the past where we're trying to get x on one side. There's three parts, this part here, this part here, and this part here. So, in fact, whatever we do, we're going to do to all three parts. But the other thing that's different is, notice my x is in the middle, and as I go, my goal is to keep x in the middle. So basically, with these kinds of problems, you want x in the middle. So the first thing I needed to do was get rid of that 9 by subtracting 9 from all three parts. And I get negative 14 is less than 2x is less than or equal to 4. And again, I'm trying to get that x by itself, so i got to get rid of the 2. So I divided each part by 2, and that's how I got my final answer there. All right, so let's go ahead and practice. So if you want, if you feel like you can do it, go ahead and try 5 through 9, or do as much as you can, and then watch the video. All right, so on number 5, this is really just like a two-step equation. To get x by itself, we're going to have to divide by 2, and we're going to have to subtract 5 on both sides. And we always would add or subtract first with two-step equations, so we're going to get rid of the 5 here first by subtracting 5 on each side. Notice on the left, we'll be left with 2x. And then on the right, we're going to be left with negative 11. And notice the less than symbol just comes down. Now I subtracted 5 on both sides. There's no reason to change the symbol. Now we're going to divide by 2, which is a positive number. And so again, I don't need to reverse the symbol. We're going to get x is less than negative 11 halves. So in this problem, we never reverse the symbol because we never divided by a negative or multiplied by a negative on both sides. Now we need to write this in interval notation. So I would first draw the graph. And let's see, less than negative 11 halves. We're going to shade everything to the left. That would be the smaller numbers than negative 11 halves. And we're not including negative 11 halves because there's no equal symbol here. And so we're going to use a parenthesis and shade everything to the left. Now remember, it does say write your answer in interval notation here. So it did say graph your solution on a number line and write your answer in interval notation. And that's what we're doing here. Let's make sure we do that last step. So from left to right, we start in what I call negative infinity land. And then we go right up to negative 11 halves. And again, notice this set of numbers doesn't include negative 11 over 2. That's why we're using a parenthesis there. And we always use a parenthesis next to infinity or negative infinity. Let's look at number 6. So here we're going to have to divide both sides by 2 to get x by itself. We're going to get x is greater than negative 7 halves. Now again, notice I didn't reverse the symbol. I divided each side by a positive number. And so the symbol doesn't change. Let's go ahead and draw the graph. So we're not going to include negative 7 halves because there's no equal symbol there. So it would be parenthesis. And we want to shade everything to the right. That would be the stuff that's greater 
in value than negative 7 halves. And so in interval notation, we're going to go from negative 7 halves to infinity. Let's do number 7. So this is another equation or inequality that's just like a two-step equation. It's going to take two steps to get x by itself here. So remember, we always want to add or subtract first, so let's get rid of that 8. And we're left with negative 2x is less than or equal to 2. And then notice here we are dividing by a negative 2. So I didn't switch it here, but I'll switch it in the next step. We're going to get x is greater or equal to negative 1. So because I divided by a negative, I did reverse the symbol. Always have to do that anytime we divide by a negative. So let's draw the graph. Uh, greater than, we're going to shade to the right, and there is an equal symbol here, so this set of numbers is going to include negative 1. Remember, this is red. x is greater than negative 1, or we say x is greater or equal to negative 1. So we are including negative 1 in our set, and everything that's greater, and in interval notation, it's going to look very similar. We'll do bracket negative 1 to the right forever. That's infinity. And that's how we write our answer in interval notation. All right, so if we're using our CSI skills, which I talked about when we discussed how to solve equations, notice we've got some simplifying to do here first. So let's go ahead and take care of that. I'll just rewrite the left side. There's nothing there I can combine together. Those are not like terms. But on the right side, let's go ahead and distribute, and we get 5x minus 20. So we've got everything simplified here, but we do have x on both sides, so let's get rid of it on one side. I'm going to subtract 5x on both sides. Again, I could have subtracted 3x on both sides, but I'd rather keep my x on the left. We're going to get negative 2x minus 12 is greater or equal to negative 20. So again, we're down to a two-step inequality. We're going to add 12 to both sides. We get negative 2x is greater or equal to negative 8. And notice here we got to divide by a negative, so you should be thinking switch the sign. I'm hoping you're thinking that. So divide by negative 2, we get x is less than or equal to 4. So let's draw the graph. Again, we want to shade everything that's smaller or to the left of 4. And we're using a bracket because of the equal sign. And going left to right, this set would be negative infinity to 4. All right, let's do the last problem here. This is like number 4 up above. So remember what our goal is. We're trying to get x by itself in the middle. So we're going to have to divide by 3. We're going to have to um, add 5 to both sides. Remember, we always do the adding or subtracting first when we're doing this kind of thing with equations. Same thing here. So let's add 5 to each part. Notice what we get there. We're going to get 3, and then uh, the, the minus 5 and the 5 cancel. We're left with 3x. And on the uh, right side, we're going to get 13. And again, remember your goal. Trying to get that x by itself, we got to get rid of that 3. It's 3 times x. We're going to have to divide by 3. And so we're going to end up with 1 is less than or equal to x is less than 13 thirds. So let's go ahead and graph this. We want everything in between those two numbers. Notice we're going to include the 1 because of that equal sign, but not the 13 halves. So I need a bracket on the left, parenthesis on the right. We're going to shade everything in between. And when we write this in interval notation, it looks almost exactly the same, except for the numbers go inside. So it's bracket 1 to 13 over 3. All right, and that's it for this video.